Welcoming Don to the Hall of Fame are Teresa Edwards and Katrina, Katrina McLean. Ladies and gentlemen, Don Staley. First, I'd like to thank uh, my presenters who think I uh, brought them up here because they were two of the best female women's basketball players that ever played, which I did, um, but also wanted somebody else to feel as uncomfortable as I am in these shoes. <laughs> so if my speech gets a little boring, just watch them sway. <laughs> um, I'd like to thank the, the Basketball Hall of Fame uh, for electing me into the, the, the Hall of Fame um, is allowing me a place amongst the greatest talents in basketball. But honors like this, although welcomed, have always made me a little uncomfortable. I seem to have an internal conflict with receiving recognition for my blessings. I think the best way for me to explain how I feel today and give tribute to the people and the experiences that led me to to hear is to describe an honor that came in 2004. This is his true story. The 2004 Olympic Games in Greece was my last Olympics as a player. To my surprise, the captains of each sport came together and selected me as the U.S. flag bearer, a completely unexpected and incredible honor. My job was to lead the U.S. delegation into the Olympic Stadium at the opening ceremony. When this day arrived, the U.S. delegation gathered in this holding area, and a really serious-looking gentleman approached me. As he suited me up in the harness and flag, he explained I was to walk six feet in front of the delegation, alone. He went on to explain that there might be a great deal of anti-American sentiment, and I should expect some boos, maybe some yells of unkind words. He finished securing the harness, took a step towards me, and said, we are the USA. You keep your head up, walk prideful, and never dip the flag. As I walked into the stadium, I was anxious and very aware that I was walking alone. In complete awe, I pushed my shoulders back, looked straight ahead, firmed my grip on the flagpole, and walked strong. As I neared the first curve, I thought about how far I'd come from the Raymond Rosen housing projects in North Philly. I wondered if the boys I, put, I grew up playing with at 25th and Diamond knew how grateful I was to them. I wondered if they knew how much they taught me, how tough they made me, and how big they made my game. I thought about my high school, Dobbins Tech, and my coach, Tony Coma, my teammates in our undefeated three-year run, and how that experience inspired me by lo my love for winning. I thought about Philadelphia, the press, Mel Greenberg, John Smallwood, and Donald Hutt, and how they, how they in that tough sports city had always embraced me. I hope they knew I played for them, and I hope I made them proud. Midway through the first straight, I heard a few boos. I kept my head straight, but glanced over to make sure I was OK. I adjusted my grip on the flagpole and kept walking. As I continued, I thought about my college coach, Debbie Ryan. I smiled as I remembered what a hard time I gave her. She was somewhat, somewhere there in the audience, and I knew she understood my being there had a great deal to do with her. This was her honor, too. There was no bigger contrast in going from the projects in, in Philly to the properness of UVA. It took a lot of patience from Debbie to get me through. When I arrived at UVA, all I knew was Philly and basketball. When I left, I knew there was much more. In that moment, I was grateful for that opportunity. As I entered the second curve, I heard chants of USA, USA. I could feel the celebration building behind me. I looked over my left shoulder and saw my teammates. With my motion, the flag swayed a little, so I quickly studied it. 
Although I was flattered by the honor of being a flag bearer, part of me really wanted to be with my team. It made me remember my first gold medal in 1996 and how we had to sacrifice a year of our life to be on the national team. T and Tree were their veterans, and they took it all in stride, while the rest of us swore Tara Vanderveer, our coach, was out to kill us. What Tara did was, geni was genius. She made us depend on each other, and in doing so, she took a group of individuals, talent, and molded us into a team with one goal, to win gold. Silver was not an option. Always prepared, strategic, and thoughtful, Tara changed the way I approached the game. I hope she noticed my changed and realized she was a big part of it. As I continued, I thought about how we won gold and were on the medal stands in Atlanta in front of our home fans and how proud I was to have reached a lifelong dream. I remember thinking I wanted a kid from Philly or someone like somewhere like Philly who I was growing up who was growing up how I, was, how I grew up, to feel what I was feeling. It was really unexplainable. My Nike rep at the time, Ray Pond, and her colleague, Sue Levin, helped me to come up with the concept of the Dawn Staley After School Program, which would cater to middle school girls in the Raymond Rosen Housing Projects. With the help of Dr. Angelia Nelson and a committed board of directors, after 14 years, 500 girls, only three failed to complete the program. So through our program and my UVA education, that will make 497 girls finish high school and were able to follow their dreams. I hope they knew. <laughs> I hope they knew I was once where they were and, th and through me, I hope they saw the possibilities that lie within them. As I headed down the straight, I hit my stride. I no longer was nervous or anxious. It hit me that this was it, and I had to take it all in. I thought about how fortunate the younger players were uh, that they had time on their side and a professional league in our country. Because of our efforts, going overseas was an option and no longer the only option. I remember how, how much gratitude I felt for the ABL organizers, as well as David Stern, Val Ackerman, Renee Brown from the NBA. They made my dreams come true by making it possible for us to play in our own country. I thought about my WNBA team, the Charlotte Steam, and the fans that so easily embraced me when I came over from the ABL. I hope they were smiling. When I reached the middle of the straight, and Usher urged me to slow down. I took shorter steps as my mind drifted when Dave O'Brien, the, the thin athletic director at Temple University, first approached me to coach. Having never been interested in coaching, I politely declined the offer three times. <laughs> when he challenged me to turn the program around, I had to accept I'm way too competitive for my own good. New to coaching, I surrounded myself with seasoned coaches as I asked the community uh, for support. North Philly showed up, and our turnaround was immediate. But even still, there were many nights I thought I, I really should have gone into broadcasting. I knew I had made the right decision to coach when I started to care more about my players than to win. And I really like wins. I remember in this one game, our players played their hearts out and got the short end of the stick at home. When the game, end of the game horn sounded, the refs just ran off the court. Emotional, I took off after them. <laughs> when, I, when I made it to the tunnel, I just stopped. Coach John Cheney was already chasing the refs down the corridor, calling them everything but the son of God. <laughs> I knew then it was right, and Dave O'Brien was right too. Walking extremely slow, as instructed by the usher, I thought about how Temple led me to the realization about my father. I was told my father, cut as we called him, would quietly attend my Temple games and sit in the Raptors, so to not be noticed. Cut had never been an advocate 
uh, for my playing basketball. He never wanted me to play basketball. Old school, I believe he thought it was a waste of time. He had no idea where the game could or would take me and probably thought discouraging me to play was in my best interest. After he passed, I was told he kept a, a box of my press clippings and, and would show anyone who sat with him. I think in the end, he finally understood and was probably quietly my biggest fan. Well, second to my mom. My mom didn't make the trip to Greece, but, she, but I knew she was watching. She could see me. I was sure she had a house full of people and cooked the spread. My brothers Anthony and Eric, who kept me safe on the courts when I was young and helped to shape my game, probably was, were there with her. I thought about my sister Tracy, who was a big source of my support throughout my career, probably made the, made the trip from North Carolina and maybe even hitched a ride from my oldest brother Lawrence, who by virtue of sibling torture gave me my toughness. Whoever was there was probably invisible to my mom as I knew she was glued to the television. I knew that every step I took, she took with me. I wasn't out there alone. She is and has been uh, my savior, always coming to my rescue. She worked harder than anyone should have, wor have to work to make sure I was okay, that we were okay. She made sacrifice after sacrifice for me, consistently giving up her basic needs to give me my wants. She fought, me, she fought for me to live my dreams, even if it was my father she was fighting. I often wondered if it was hard being so strong for so long. I smiled as I thought, she doesn't have to anymore. As I neared the end of the last straight and saw an usher signaling for me to enter the field with other countries, I took one last look around, looked behind me and thought, unbelievable, the best athletes in the world are following a girl from, from the projects in North Philly. A, a shallow smile crossed my lips as I looked up and whispered, thank you. That thank you was for all the people who walked into that stadium with me that night, but were invisible. All the people who were able to make it, make it here today and those who weren't, but have in some way been a part of my journey. Coach Tony Coma and my high school teammates, who have always supported me, Ms. Munson um, as well from, from Dobbins, Mike Flynn and Rich Kirk who gave me my start in AAU basketball, Philly's finest, Sonny Hill, Mike Horsey, Lorlane Jones, uh, Coach Newman, um, Allison Ekes. I'd like to thank Debbie Ryan and all the assistant coaches at UVA, Tanya, Audra, Tammy, Dina, and yes, Heidi and Heather and all of my other UVA teammates, all of my Olympic teammates, T. Tree, Lisa, Cheryl, Ruthie Bolton, Nikki McCray, all of my many coaches, especially Lisa Boyer, who has the distinction of, of having been my coach in the ABL and is currently my associate head coach at the University of South Carolina. My Olympic and pro coaches, Mary Nell Matters, Ann Donovan, Nell Fortner, Van Chancellor, and Tara Vanderveer. All of my many trainers who kept these knees healthy, especially Tanya Holly from the Sting and Sue Saliba from UVA. I have to thank uh, Dr. Frank McHugh, the surgeon who fixed these knees at least, three, at least eight times. May he rest in peace. Renee Brown, my mentor and confidant and one of the best people I know. Ray Pond, who went out of her way to make sure that women were treated as well as men. Nike for always being the first to stand up for us. Carol Callen, Jim Tooley, and the rest of the leadership at USA Basketball. All of my assistant coaches, especially the ones at Temple who made it possible for me to play and coach at the same time. Sean Campbell, Urban Monier, Gay Chapman, Ed Baldwin, and Fred Shamil. To my Temple players, who I met as teenagers and are now grown women in their 30s and who have become much better friends than they were players, which is really saying a lot because we were really good. Dr. Angelia Nelson, Fred Kaufman, and all the staff at the Dawn Staley Foundation, we really made a difference. My brothers Lawrence, Anthony and Eric, my sister Tracy and all of my nieces and nephews, my beautiful, beautiful, beautiful mother, and the rest of my family. Angela O'Neill, 
Herb Matthews, and all of my friends who have followed my career. Eric Hyman for bringing me to the University of South Carolina, which brought, back my, what brought my mother back home. Ray Tanner, a great coach, administrator, and friend with deep pockets. <laughs> President Pastides, the University of South Carolina, and Gamecock Nation for embracing me, my assistant coaches, Darius, Nikki, and the rest of our staff. And to my players at South Carolina, you made my, my transition easy. Stick with me, we'll be national champs. I'll close by saying, every experience in my life has been purposeful. Every person in my life, a teacher. My steps were divinely ordered, I just followed the path. My life and my success are just proof of life's possibilities, and I don't take any of it for granted. I hope I've done right by my blessings, and I pray that I've lent hope to those who needed it, because I believe that's what I was meant to do. So although uncomfortable, I'll take this honor and we'll call it my final victory as a player, but we'll always know the truth. This victory isn't mine. To God be the glory. Thank you.